In August of this year, we posted a video called Strange Happenings with Putin's Yacht Whilst Frozen by the Italian Government. The video was later removed by YouTube after the captain of the 140 meter or 459 foot superyacht complained that his name was featured on a manifest that showed a Russian crew, many of whom worked for the Russian government. Here is that video with further details about what happened. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Italy and welcome to Marina de Carrara. I was here over a year ago, I was here last May. And um, we walked along this promenade here. It's actually an interesting video. I'll put a link uh, above so you can go and check it out. And there's all marble laid down on the, on the floor there. Um, and you can see all of this old marble here that's run along here. They're using it as a, as a barrier to stop uh, floods and stuff. These are the mountains in the background where they get all that marble from the Carrara mountains. But there's another reason why it's kind of famous now, and it's because of this yacht over here. Motia Chaharasad is known by the locals as Putin's yacht. And the story that we've heard from multiple people now is that the yacht was bought for Vladimir Putin by a number of Russian billionaires as a gift. So they, they all put money in and got this yacht built for him. And, the, and this yacht last year, the, the entire crew switched out overnight. So the crew on board were all Russians and they all left in truck, in buses. And then the English crew or the English speaking crew came on the next day, which is unheard of in this industry for an entire crew to change. Now we do have rotational crew on yachts but it's staggered, you know, you, you might be joining and you might happen to join the same day as someone else, but you don't have a whole entire crew that leaves and then another one comes, and especially one that speaks a different language. Um, and also it was covered quite a lot by a, a Russian investigative team on YouTube that when they looked into the names, they got a hold of the manifest of the crew, that, that Russian speaking crew that had left. And most of them were members of the FSO, which is the, like the secret service the russian secret service that the ones that look after the president so the, the yacht was arrested here um obviously they're all denying that this is it's his yacht and it's anything to do with him the ownership is buried in a number of different companies and stuff like that and here the yacht stays this is the, this was arrested by the italian government along with sailing yacht a also arrested until recently, it was understood that all the arrested yachts in Italy were being maintained by the Italian government, who were footing the bill. However, it's recently come to light that at least in terms of Motiachi Harasad, the unnamed owner is paying for its upkeep. The Italian government have never put a name to this yacht, unlike every other yacht that's been arrested. And on the official list, it's still referred to as an unnamed Russian owner. However, when the yacht was arrested in 2022, the Italian government said there was evidence of meaningful economic and business connections with prominent elements of the Russian government subject to sanctions. The unnamed owner, at least on paper, is believed to be Edward Kutenatov, the former CEO of Rosneft, Russia's biggest energy supplier. If his name sounds familiar, it's because he was also named as the owner, again, at least on paper, of Motia Amadea, the yacht seized by the US in Fiji and currently sat in San Diego sporting a US flag. The US government say Kutenatov is a straw owner of Shahar Assad and the true owner, they believe, is the Russian president Vladimir Putin. Now what's interesting about this yacht right now is, is that it's going through a refit period. The water has been drained out of the dry dock and there is work going on on a yacht that has been arrested. As you can see from the footage, the scaffolding around the stern with canvas covers and other areas of the boat included. Now, the Italian sea group whose shipyard is doing the work admitted to the Financial Times that the yacht is in a refit period. It's weird because the boat is, has been frozen, right? So it shouldn't really, theoretically, shouldn't be having any work done on it because it belongs to a sanctioned Russian and, you know, they've been frozen. But the Italian law says that they have to keep the vessel at a standard 
uh, that it was at when they arrested it. However, we've had contacts close to the vessel telling us that the yacht is actually having modifications, possibly even a stern extension. The stern extension increases the length of the yacht by adding section to the rear. Now, we can see in the aerial footage the stern is covered for ongoing works, and if you look closely you can see the paint has been removed from the stern of the vessel near to where the canvas area is, possibly uh, showing where the new extension will be grafted onto the vessel. Also interestingly, in the aerial footage you can see they've erected canvas barriers so you can't see what's going on on board the vessel. Very unusual, not something that I've ever seen erected on a yacht in a dry dock period along the walkways like that. Um, I've spent many years in dry docks uh, over the years and I've never seen anything like that. Normally they'll put the canvas on the outside, they'll put, if they're going to paint the vessel, they'll put scaffolding around the vessel and then they'll canvas on the outside of the scaffolding so the vessel is inside. But I've never seen them just put it hanging it between it's, it's just like it looks like it's just designed to obscure people from the outside being able to see what they're doing on board which is very unusual in itself but you remember what it was like on board uh, or outside of the Motiof Crescent in Tarragona in Spain they had something similar erected along the back so you couldn't see in the Italian government have mentioned nothing really since uh, its arrest however the fact that they're allowing the yacht to be modified tells you everything you need to know about what will happen to this yacht in the future. The government here are, it seems, just waiting to hand the yacht back regardless, even if the ultimate beneficial owner turns out to be Vladimir Putin himself. And whilst they hold on to it, they're happy to allow someone, anyone, to keep paying the bills. And, uh, and here it sits. A European Commission spokesperson told the Financial Times that member states are responsible for implementing sanctions and that the asset freezers do not affect the ownership of the assets. When asked about the payment scheme for Shahar Assad's upkeep, the spokesperson said that the maintenance costs of frozen assets can be paid by the designated person under a standard derogation. Italy and the European Commission did not confirm who the designated person was for Motiyat Shahar Assad. We contacted the department of the Italian government that deals with arrested vessels, the Agenzia del Demanio, for a statement, and they replied, for confidentiality and security purposes, information relating to freezing procedures is covered by professional secrecy. Therefore, the Agenzia del Demanio cannot make declarations nor disclose additional information on the freezing procedures compared to what has already been communicated. So there are lots of questions really about the future of this yacht. I mean, is it ever going to be allowed into marinas now that the people know who effectively owns this vessel? The future of Russians moving around on these yachts in general is completely unknown right now, isn't it? The longer this goes on, the war, the war goes on in Ukraine. I mean, how long is this boat going to sit here? It could be here for years. If that, as long as that war continues, this boat's going to sit here, presumably. But remember, the current Italian government is not the same one that put sanctions on Russia when they invaded Ukraine. Because in 2022, a right-wing nationalist, Giorgia Maloney, became the Italian Prime Minister. She was pro-Russia leading up to the war in Ukraine, but has since said that she will continue to supply arms to Ukraine. If you've got any information about this yacht, please be sure to get in touch. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, on Threema. Uh, you can also get us through the About page of the YouTube channel. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any information about other stories as well, also get in touch along the same methods. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, from Marina di Carrara in Italy, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>